Now, why do we concentrate so much on terms, words, and definitions? Because the stage of name and form and the stage of consciousness have a feedback loop between them. You cannot separate them, really. It's, it's almost artificial to make them into two stages because they're basically one and the same thing. You could look at name and form as a gate on consciousness. In other words, the name and form that you have labels for is what you're going to be conscious of. And if you don't have labels, if you don't have a name or a form for that particular phenomenon, you won't be conscious of it even if it's right in front of your nose. Let me give you a great example. When the Spanish Armada laid anchor off of the coast of South America, the natives the Mayans and the Incas did not see it. It was invisible to them. They could not see it because they did not have a category in their set of name and forms for ocean-going vessels. They did their best to just shut it out of their consciousness and ignore it. And then when the Spaniards came out in their armor, on their mounted, on their steeds, this really freaked the Mayans out because they didn't have a concept for that either in their name and form. And yet these guys were showing up and killing them. It would be just like as if, I don't know, some aliens from outer space started killing people with some kind of nano weapons or something that we have no name for. At first, people wouldn't want to believe that it was happening. They wouldn't see that it was happening. They would see something else. They would call it something that was already present in their network of names and forms, in their ontology. And we're going to get deep into ontological analysis in the next video. Right now, we're just laying the foundation, laying the groundwork for that analysis. Duplication is a, a somewhat tedious process. I know you have to look things up in the dictionary, and nobody wants to do that. I had one student who I was telling for over a year, I think it was about a year and a half, you have to clear your definitions in the dictionary. You have to clear your definitions. He wouldn't do it. He just wouldn't do it. Well, of course, he was like the slowest student <laughs> that we had in the ashram in India. Finally, after a year and a half, one day he came to me and he said, wow, I just had the most incredible experience. I said, what, did you see God or what? He said, no, I looked up some words in the dictionary. And it's like, everything is clear to me now. And I'm going, that's what I've been telling you for a year and a half since you got here, that the first thing you have to do when studying something is look up the terms. Then everything else is clear. Let's put it this way. You can bang your head against the wall studying a subject for years and not make as much progress as you can make in a week or two, by identifying all the unique terms or uses of terms in that subject and looking up their definitions in a good dictionary. This is my experience. Mostly it's going to be outside of your ontology, outside of your name and form, because everybody knows the teacher is going to tell us to look up the words and we don't want to do it because the teacher told us, right? Duh. You know, sometimes teachers actually know something. <laughs> In this particular case, teachers write. And if you did this, you would find that 90% of the confusion of the subject would just melt away. And the rest will melt away when you get experience of the thing you're talking about. What we're doing when we're duplicating, getting all the terms defined, and then setting up a structure of terminology and analyzing it, we're actually creating the name and form of the being of that subject. If you want to become a doctor, what's the first thing you have to do? Learn anatomy. And what is anatomy? It's simply a bunch of terms for stuff that we know already about our own, our own bodies, but don't have words for. Similarly, if you want to learn music, what's the first thing you do? You learn about quarter notes, eighth notes, half notes, A, B, C, D, and so on. This is vocabulary. This is terminology. This is the technical, what is called, terministic screen upon which we project our awareness. And if there is no category, 
for name and form for our awareness to land on, it doesn't land. And we are unaware of that phenomenon until we develop a terminology or a category of meaning for it. First, communication depends on language. We talked about communication last time. It means making a copy, a duplication of what's in someone else's mind in your mind. That's learning, one phase of learning. Duplication, communication, depend on language. And we can be conscious of something only if we have a description of its name and form in our ontology. Like I said, we're going to go into ontology very deeply in the next video. Right now, we're laying the groundwork, laying the foundation for the study of ontology in learning. And it just gets better and better. You know, duplication is kind of a slog. It's a little bit tedious. And what we're going to be studying now in understanding is also a bit tedious and mechanical. But once we get to ontological analysis, you're going to be amazed how it's going to fly. Uh, so this whole thing uh, depends on having definitions for all the important terms in your subject. Once you have that established, everything goes like a dream. It's amazing.